Welcome to the Morning Nerdy News. I'm your host, Gray Falcon. Sorry about that. Had to get a little bit of a quick restart. My wife called me, and she never calls me at this time of day, especially because of what her job is. So, needed to answer that. But we're back and on, and we're going to go ahead and get on into this. So, first up, the Game Award winners. We're going to go ahead and cover that, brought to us by GameSpot, who has all of this detailed and marked up for us. So, go over there, check them out, look into their articles. They do a lot of great stuff over there. But we're going to go ahead and start off with the big one. So, Game of the Year here at the top went to Last of Us Part 2. And as we can see, Last of Us Part 2 took a lot of the big ones so best game direction best narrative they all around had an incredible game although controversial it's one of those games that you don't get to choose what happens you are playing through someone's story so you're not making the decisions you are simply experiencing what their life is like through this. And I remember this being a controversy when the first one came out. A lot of people had issues with that and wanted to be able to have different decisions. But really, this is something that was created more as a piece of artwork. And it's it's just incredible. I really enjoyed this, even for how disturbing and how off-putting this game could be at times. But they basically swept it, and Sony basically swept everything through here, as we'll see. So Best Art Direction went to Ghost of Tsushima. Best Score went to Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, so far, everything Sony right there. Best Audio Design, again, Last of Us Part Two, And Best Performance was Laura Bailey as Abby, again, from Last of Us Part Two, And you'll see... Four of the options were all listed in here as Sony titles. The only one that wasn't a Sony exclusive was Logan Cunningham as Hades in Hades. So, you know, not a lot of uh, gamble there for Sony in that particular one. Games for Impact winner, tell me why. Best ongoing goes to No Man's Sky. That one I find very interesting because it's a game that so many, so many people were like... What is this? We feel lied to. This isn't what we wanted when it first came out and has made a huge comeback, keeps providing updates, and people keep going back to it just because of how well supported it is and them going through and following through and making the game what they said it was going to be at launch. So if you haven't tried it since the launch or haven't tried it at all because of how bad the reviews were when it came out, I would highly recommend that you go and check it out. You can probably find it on Steam sale or something if you don't already own it and your time isn't being completely consumed by cyberpunk. And then we'll go in. Best Indie was Hades. Uh, best Mobile Game Among Us, which kind of funny that that just fell under the mobile game for that one, given where it can be played on PC in all kinds of different locations, but still incredible and a lot of fun. Uh, best Community Support went to Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Best VR, Alex from Half-Life, that's that's really no surprise to me. That game looks incredible. And if you have a Index, the top-of-the-line Valve VR setup, uh, you would absolutely enjoy this. I don't have one, but I have been able to go in and experience some of what this game is and how it portrays in that system. And it, it really makes a huge, huge difference by going in and using that high end. But again, you're spending a thousand dollars for that premium setup. And then continuing on down the list here, uh, innovation and accessibility. Again, Last of Us Part Two. Best action went to Hades, another that independent game that won uh, there. And then we also have. Best Action Adventure, again, Last of Us Part 2. Best Role Playing went to Final Fantasy VII Remake. And we have Best Fighting for Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. And Best Family, Animal Crossing New Horizons. And if you're not an Animal Crossing person, I get that. I understand. However, my whole family has played through this game. Otherwise, my wife still plays it, still enjoys it. Sometimes she doesn't know why she's playing it. But... She is still going through and playing this. She sits down and plays with our youngest son, and he really enjoys to go in there and 
have the two of them running around their worlds and just enjoying each other's company as they play through that. Best sim strategy went to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, not surprising there when it comes to simulators. It's probably the best looking one and one of the best running ones if you have the equipment to be able to do it at the high end. Uh, best sports game goes to Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. Uh, so that's the combo for that remake setup. The best multiplayer goes to Among Us. And content creator of the year winner is Valkyrie. Best debut game went to Phasmophia. I'm sorry, I, I don't know that one. I didn't check it out and I have not uh, really looked into it. So I might have to check it out just because of that. Best esports athlete winner, uh, Hio Shoemaker Sue, League of Legends. Uh, and then I'm just going to scroll through here. We get into a lot of the esports things. It's all League of Legends stuff for the most part there. And that brings us down to the bottom. But really, I think the big takeaway from this is Sony gets a lot of hype here. And that's only going to help push next gen even further. Unfortunately, the only thing Microsoft really had going for it was Flight Simulator, which... PC game, not really something you'd go to an Xbox to go check out and pick up. So, yeah, uh, big news there. So we're, we're going to have to hope that Microsoft really comes out swinging next year if they want to compete, especially given that uh, we're supposed to see the new Horizon and we're supposed to see the new God of War next year. And that's those are two very, very heavy hitting games with God of War winning game of the year when it came out so be prepared for an epic epic year of new games as they start to land next year but speaking of epic games uh we know that there is a sale going on so i would recommend that you go over and check out epic games because they are doing a bunch of free games i just wanted to throw this in there because if you're a fan of free things and epic has done this before where they give away a bunch of free games all you have to do is sign up log in and they're giving a free game away for 15 days so make sure you head over there and check that out if if you don't mind using the epic store stuff this isn't promoted this is just me letting you know there are games available that you can go get for free over the next 15 days probably go check into it see if there's anything that you like when it pops up each time and then moving over into other game news cyberpunk 2077 has issued an apology for all the problems and other things that have happened with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. You can read through all of this here, but they're going to start to issue refunds. Sony is issuing refunds on digital purchases in some cases. Uh, one person said that in order to get it, they did delete their game, all their save data, and spoke to them in a professional manner in order to ensure that they could get that. So your mileage may vary, but Kind and courteous seems to be one of the easiest ways of going about this and making sure that you have the game deleted up front in order to do that. But CD Projekt Red is also talking about issuing refunds for the game as well. But they have also issued a couple of hotfixes. So hotfix 1.04, you can see here in both of these tweets that they have that it's out for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. So you'll be able to go in and get some of the bug fixes going on and taken care of. I, I don't know how much this is really going to overall resolve things. I have downloaded this and I was playing yesterday and I, I redid the scene with Jackie just because I wanted to explore, see what the different conversation things were and see how that played out. And and one of the scenes he hands you something and it's supposed to be a chip that goes in your head. And when you grab that chip, uh, for whatever reason, he had a gun sticking through his head, grabs it by the handle, pulls it out and hands you the gun or and then proceeds to have you put it in your head. So it's supposed to be a chip. And I know this because it played through properly the first time I enjoyed that scene. And then the second time it did that. So just kind of weird on how that that progresses and it's not uncommon for me to pull up my scanner to try and scan the area see if there's anything I can hack and then come out of that and have the scanner stuck on my screen and all I can do is is 
you know, look at things, won't let me fight, won't let me attack, I can't scroll through my weapons, it's just stuck there, and that prompts me to have to save, reload the game, and that typically fixes the problem for me, but they are definitely having some issues. I am playing on PC, I don't know how this looks on PS4 or Xbox One, my son is also playing on PC, so unfortunately I can't give you any idea as to what's going on with that on their end, but apparently it's pretty bad, and I would recommend maybe heading over to IGN, GameSpot, maybe Giant Bomb, hit up any of these major places that are putting up videos of it, so you can actually see what some of these issues are. I did cover some of the bugs the other day that were put up by IGN, so you can go and watch that video as well if you wanted to see how some of the bugs were playing through, but again, I'm pretty sure those were all PC views for bugs not showing the problems that were happening on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And then we're gonna head over into EA news, where EA has swooped in and purchased Codemasters. They have this press release right here, but originally this was being purchased by, by Take-Two, and Electronic Arts just out of nowhere came in and apparently dropped a larger bid of 1.2 billion dollars in order to acquire them now if you're not familiar with codemasters they do racing games primarily so if you've ever heard of dirt or i believe project cars is one of theirs they they do a lot of of racing type games so for electronic arts to come in and and swoop this up is interesting we'll have to see where exactly they intend for this to go moving forward and speaking of vehicles, Tesla has an update where it tells employees Model S and X production will be shut down for 18 days. Now, they are offering time for people to go over and work on Model 3s for space that's available and some additional cash that's available to them. However, for the mo they are mostly stuck in a position where they are going to have to use five days of holiday time well not holiday time but uh, vacation time basically in order to cover at least five days of these and that's assuming that they are able to go over and work on the other model vehicles such as the model 3 or the model y which right now they are putting a big emphasis on they are offering uh, free supercharging available for those vehicles. I don't know how long that'll be available. I don't know for the time period that that free char supercharging is available. If it's only through the rest of the year, which not that much time left, or if they're giving a multi-year thing. My friend who owns a Model 3 purchased a package that gave him lifetime free supercharging. So if that's what they're offering here, that would be a pretty big bump. And then in final news, uh, we have an update, this comes from us over at Reuters, where suspected Russian hackers spied on U.S. Treasury emails per sources. So, long story short here, uh, got some information supposedly that a Russian-backed hackers were going in, uh, f gathering information from the uh, Treasury Department, Russia denies these. I say that these are unbiased uh, claims against them. However, there was a meeting on Saturday to discuss this, and we're not we're not entirely sure what's going on. Full information has not been released to the public, but we do have some information in regards to uh, the IT company Solar Winds, which is the company that does all, all most of this work for the Treasury Department and other parts of military and and other locations for the U.S. government. So that, that's a little scary. Did put out something saying that they had an update that occurred this summer, and it is possible that a highly sophisticated, targeted manual supply chain attack by a nation state uh, could have happened, basically. So down in here, it gives that, that quote, highly sophisticated, targeted, and manual supply chain attack by a nation state but no real detail is given they they gave this very brief comment to basically say 
yes, something appears to have happened and we're not, we're not saying anything. We're, we're letting the government sort it out. We they basically don't want to incriminate them in, themselves any further than they already are in this mess. So we'll need to keep an eye out on this because this is a, uh, this is very concerning if they've had access to emails and other information in regards to our financial sector or even worse if we find out that this breach has gotten even further into military information or election information or who knows what else so keep an eye on this we'll we'll update you as we get more information in regards to this type of thing but that's going to be it for today remember if you haven't already click the follow button if you are watching this over on youtube for the first time make sure you click that subscribe button uh, if you haven't checked out my channel, it is Gray Falcon over there as well, G-R-A-Y underscore Falcon. And remember to follow me on Twitter as the Gray Falcon. Until next time, have a good one.